Hey, what is going on everybody out there? This is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to this brand new JJ's One Man Podcast. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying all the new video content that's been going up on the channel as of late. There's brand new Let's Plays, there's brand new unboxings, new video reviews, uh, new YouTube shorts. There's a whole bunch of content on the channel that you guys definitely need to check out if you haven't done so already. A lot of gaming content because there's so many games that have been coming out and there's a lot of things to talk about, uh, including also new podcasts. If you haven't yet checked out the podcast uh, play playlist that I have on the channel for JJ's One Man Podcast, definitely do so because there's a lot of episodes on there that I know you're going to love. There's a lot of great conversation and a lot of good food for thought. But today we got more of it because I want to talk about some stuff. Okay, It's a more heavy handed topic this time around, even though we've talked about plenty of heavy handed topics in the past. But with this one, I feel like it's a little bit more relevant, especially in the wake of the release of Final Fantasy 16. And it's something that's been kind of like looming or lingering around for quite some time. And I think I've touched on on it in the past, but not as much as I'm going to do right now. I want to talk about this idea of people just flat out lying about games. And more specifically, a lot of people in the media, a lot of content creators, a lot of individuals in the industry, for whatever reason, I don't know what it is, but it seems like people are going around making statements about certain games without ever truly either playing them or really giving them the time of day, really giving them the benefit of doubt and the due diligence. Uh, with Final Fantasy 16 in particular, there was a bunch of different things that came out about this game, not just before the release, but afterwards with some of the reviews and some of the opinions that I saw like passed around here and there, a lot of which people reacted to uh, mostly negatively because of whatever reason. But really, it just all goes back to this idea of like just people or just individuals that are just flat out lying about these games or flat out being disingenuous with a lot of the statements about them. Uh, with Final Fantasy 16, I recently just finished the game. I rolled credits on it. I did a video on the channel, if you haven't already, that got into some of my post-game thoughts about it, as well as also showcasing some gameplay, got into some combat, did some quests, all that jazz. I'm still working on the full video review. It's going to take me a while, and I'm going on a little mini vacation soon just to get some downtime. So it's going to be a bit before I finish that up. But I did want to put that video out just to talk about the game when it was fresh in my mind after just finishing finishing it. And by the time I got to that, by the time I finished everything, there was all these different things that were shared around online about places, for example, like Polygon, there was also the Gamer, and a few others, I think Kotaku had one in the mix as well. There was a lot of places that were just dunking on this game, or in a lot of social media posts that were really trying to give a bad impression about this game. Now, like I said in my original post-game thoughts of the video of uh, you know of Final Fantasy uh, 16, I said that this game is awesome. This game is one of the best of 2023, hands down. It's not only a great game to play; it feels good to play, but it's overall a great experience. And a lot of the stuff that people were reacting to and that I saw were different statements about FF 16 that were just categorically untrue. Like for whatever reason. A lot of people seem to have some sort of big issue with the story of this game, which I find very surprising. Places like Polygon, because I read their review, it was done by Jita Jackson, and some of the stuff posted over on The Gamer, they had this really bad issue with the story for whatever reason, where they're saying that it's flat out terrible, that it's wooden, that it's hollow, that it isn't as good as previous Final Fantasy games, uh, it's not as the best story of this year, it just doesn't feel like a fun thing to follow, and I'm like, what game did you guys play? Like, what exactly did you guys play? Because a lot of the statements, a lot of the things that they're saying about it just isn't representative of what I played and what exactly I saw in Final Fantasy 16. It's just weird to me that that's a thing. And it's just, I, I don't understand how we could all be playing the same game and we're all going to have our varying opinions and stuff, but have certain opinions get put out there that are so divergent from what the actual reality is and what some of the other, uh, many other people have been saying about this game that it's just like, I feel like either you guys didn't play this or you guys were looking for something to get under everybody's skin. Like, it was just very weird to see that because I just don't understand, like, how anybody could play through Final Fantasy 16, even if you only played the beginning sections of it, like, that first few hours, let alone even the first hour or two, and think to yourself, like, this story is terrible. Like, Final Fantasy 16's story is so mature, you know, in comparison to many other entries of the series. It's so uh, edgy as far as, like, the types of things and the material and the subject matter that they get into, as well as also, it's very, very shocking in certain spots. And it has a lot of, like, very layered, very complex characters that aren't so shallow or so kind of, like, one note in comparison to many other Final Fantasy games. Like, many of the stories in the Final Fantasy series have always been, like, 
you know, they've always had like a lot of different like tropes or specific characters that fit these certain roles. And while they had depth to them, they didn't have as much depth as like some of the more later games in the series. With this one, I feel like it's the most complex because it's really taking inspiration from things like Game of Thrones, things like, you know, much more darker fantasy tales. Like it's still at its heart Final Fantasy, but it's clearly inspired by a lot more of the complex and more deeper storytelling of more modern like releases, like including Game of Thrones. I would even argue The Last of Us. I would even argue The Witcher. There's a lot of inspiration for many things like that. And some of these places and some of these writers that have been talking about this game are just not acknowledging that or they're flat out saying the complete opposite and just like not so much lying about the game because it's an opinion based thing to say some of these things, but just feels like they just really didn't play this game or they were trying to put out things out there that would either do well in SEO or would do well to fit within the bubble of people that they're, that they're uh, talking to. Because it's just weird to me how that's the case. Because again, I, I look at all these statements, I look and read all these different reviews that have been giving the game like a 6 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10. And look, I understand we could get into a whole discussion about review scores. It's a timeless thing where nobody is ever going to truly agree on a review score because of the way that that kind of like, you know, affects the business of games and the way that it affects the industry in general. A lot of people don't like review scores because they feel they're very reductive of an opinion about a game, which I understand, but they do have their place and stuff. But I played through this game and I can't see how any outlet or any writer or any reviewer would give this game like a 6 out of 10 or a 5 out of 10. Or such a lower score compared to what this game is actually delivering. I feel like for me, when I re when I uh, reviewed it for Clownfish TV, I gave it a solid 9 out of 10. Because I felt that was fair. I felt that was good. I would have given it a 10 out of 10 had it not been for a few little minor gripes that I had with it. But this is still one of the best games of the year, in my opinion. And I look at these review scores, I'm like, you guys either are trying to be overly harsh. You guys are looking for problems or you're looking for things to say about this game just because of a certain group of people that just seem like they're just trying to be anti-FF16. Like, it's just really weird. It comes off like that. And it sucks to say that. But that seems to be the reality of the matter. Now... The other thing, too, that really rubbed me the wrong way, and I talked about this on TikTok, was that they had this video clip going around. I believe it was a clip either shared by Polygon or somebody else that had kind of like, you know, quoted Polygon was sharing like a clip of this guy that was eating a sandwich and playing Final Fantasy 16. He was clearly in the prologue of the game. And it was funny enough because people on Twitter actually put that little note. I guess yeah, you could do this thing on Twitter where you could actually get a bunch of people to like report a certain facts about certain pieces of news and stuff to give like a little note for everybody that's reading it to be like, hey, look, this is the context of this thing. These are the facts you need to know when watching this clip. And what everybody had put was that, look, the guy was in the prologue of the game. He had put on all the rings, the like the assist rings, both for making the combat easier, making the dodging and the healing automatic. And he was playing on story mode, which is like the easiest version of the difficulty in this game. And it's funny because he's just sitting there holding the controller, pressing one button and eating a sandwich. Like he's trying to give the Final Fantasy 16 a bad impression, showing that it's like super easy to play and that it's not complex like you don't have to pay attention it's such a disingenuous such like a crappy thing to do and he's clearly doing it because he wants to get under everybody's skin he's clearly doing it because he wants everybody to react to it and everybody saw right through that nonsense yet they still reacted to it regardless and that seems to be a thing with this game and it's like i don't understand why people are trying so hard to be like that because again, like when you play the actual game, when you sit down and play this game on PlayStation 5, it is not like that at all. Everybody immediately saw through this. But I still question, it's like, why are people going out of their way and trying so hard to do stuff like this to make this game see seem crappier than what it actually is? And one of the other things I think that goes along hand in hand with that was this controversy like just before the game came out. And I would think, argue that it was even earlier before that. It was this interview that Noki Yoshida or Yoshi P had with IGN. It was basically a, a email interview that I believe one of the people there, one of the writers, sent like these couple of questions that were related to race. And I think that the the answer that Yoshi P had given was was, you know, it was trying to be, you know, diplomatic about saying, like, look, we, we care about diversity in our games. We care about all these topics and stuff. But this is a story set in this one section in this inspire inspired world that's really heavily inspired by medieval Europe and a certain section of your of European culture. And everybody just ran with this, trying to uh, give this impression that Yoshi P and Square Enix was racist. And I think that was like completely off base, completely like a far reach out of left field, off the top rope, literally. And I think that a lot of people just did not let that go. And they're trying to like dunk on the game and trying to give this game like a bad impression. Look, I understand 
people are passionate about diversity in games. Obviously, it's a very important topic, but we also got to let games and game creators tell the story and render the stories the way that they want to. I don't think that Yoshi P or Square Enix is at any point, you know, any sort of like indication or any sort of like iota racist whatsoever. I mean, for God's sakes, Final Fantasy has had black characters and other types of characters of different skin colors and skin tones over the years, some of which are iconic, <laughs> like literally like have really stuck with a lot of people, including some in Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm just saying. The point is, is that there's this is like like a concentrated effort to make this game and to make everything about this game look really bad. And it's like, why are you guys doing this? Like, why are you guys trying so hard to do that? I find it to be so dumb. I find it to be so ridiculous. It's being very disingenuous and unfair to the game, let alone the game creators, you know, let alone Yoshi P. Because I don't think Yoshi P deserved that type of ire from a lot of people. And especially those on social media that were basically talking smack and just kind of rolling with some of the stuff that was said, like the random statements about him and about the game that were just said and just like totally just not giving it the benefit of doubt. Like, that's not fair to me. Like, that's not right. And it's, and it's really even worse and super disingenuous from a lot of people in the media to really kind of like roll with that. I think they're doing it specifically because it gets attention, it gets traffic, and or it gets eyes on their stuff. And I think that's so wrong. I don't, I don't think that was right at all. When you play the actual game, like the game is not being like, you know, quote unquote racist or anything like that. I think that's so ridiculous. Even people that I've seen that, that care about topics like that are like, yo, this game is dope. Like, why is everybody like going after this game like that? Like, it's just, it's weird to me. It's super weird and super dumb. It's, it's reductive, you know, for being critical about games in the industry. It doesn't serve anybody like any greater purpose other than that group of people that just like to argue with everybody. That's the other thing too. And, and I've talked about this many times in the past. There are way too many people on social media, specifically on Twitter as of late, that are just looking to argue. Like, <clears throat> they just want to fight. Like, that's the bad thing. Like, they just want to fight with everybody over every little thing. And then complain about how the games industry and their gaming community is super toxic. And I, and I was like, you know, that is such a dumb thing to say. You know, if you're going to go kick a hornet's nest, you can't complain that you get stung afterwards. Let alone, you can't complain about someone that you go and slap in the face and then they hit you back. Like, come on now. I'm not saying that, like, you can't put your opinions out on the internet. I'm not saying that you can't have your own opinion stuff. Of course. There's discussion, debate, there's arguments. You're never going to stop the internet from being the internet or doing internet things. But, like, the these, like, people that are just clearly, they're motivated by just getting a rise out of everybody are not helping anything whatsoever, let alone representing games or this particular game, FF16, in any sort of, like, real authentic light. And that needs to stop. That really does need to stop. And I think that the people that are constantly battling with those out there that are doing this stuff, or at least, you know, always reacting to their stuff, they need to starve them of oxygen. I was listening to Sacred Symbols not too long ago, one of the, their newer episodes, and they were talking about this very same thing because they got into a whole discussion about FF16. It's like, look, the, the less oxygen, the less spotlight that you give these people, the more the easier that they're going to go away. Because a lot of the stuff that they're saying is not relevant, it's not, you know, interesting, and it's not anything that's really going to have any sort of real weight or real value. You're only doing, it's only getting that because you're giving it to it, because you're just like so against it. Instead of just like seeing it for what it is, it's like these people are just trying to be assholes to everybody else. You know, they're trying to just dunk on stuff for the sake of dunking on it, and they want to be the center of attention as opposed to being authentic and real when it comes to uh, criticizing or critiquing games. So the more that you ignore them, the more that you go look elsewhere for better people that might even have opinions that are different than yours, that are just like completely, you know, stuff that you might disagree with, but just give you something more to think about. Those are the ones you should pay attention to as opposed to these other jackasses. You know, at least that's how I feel. And that's what I got out of it from their podcast. But I feel very similar in a lot of ways. Because it is true. Like, again, there's just so many out there that are so hard at, or at least, you know, so desperate for attention and so desperate for just spotlight that they will say and do anything, even if it means just like just going at people for the sake of going at people. And it's stupid to me. So anyway, just wanted to get that off my chest, talk about it a little bit. I know it's a lot of heavy handed stuff. It's very complex and layered topic. And there's so many other factors that I didn't even really touch on so many things about Final Fantasy 16 in general, or at least the discourse about this game that I feel like is very kind of like indicative of a lot of nonsense that's lingered around even earlier this year. Like we saw very similar things, obviously with Hogwarts Legacy. I feel like that's like the best example and the prime example of like a lot of nonsensical discourse about the game that wasn't authentic or representative of the game itself. 
Like, there were just so many things, like, all over the place. And a lot of those people that made a big deal about that game in particular, really, a lot of them were just still caught in the same nonsense. Like, if you notice, like, some of those same outlets that were all about, like, you know, putting the discretion on their reviews, boycotting the game or boycotting the reviews, but then still going to make content about the game, like, where are they now? You know, where, what are they doing now that's so relevant and that's so important, or at least that's so interesting to make them of any sort of importance or any sort of relevance that's not related to nonsense? You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you could see that. People can see that. The audience can see that right now. And I think that everybody's getting sick and tired of it. Everybody's just kind of done with it. You can even argue the same thing about Diablo a little bit. You can even definitely argue the same thing about Star Wars Jedi Survivor. There was some nonsense with that that I saw that kind of bled over into the Star Wars Outlaws discussions when that game was revealed. And it's like, come on now. Like, stop trying to make these generalized statements of, like, a whole group of people that are into Star Wars, you know, when you're only looking at either a few people or you're just kind of, like, trying to imprint your own personal nonsense on everybody else. It's like, stop that. Like, be more authentic, be more fair, be more genuine with games discussion and games criticism because this, t- this all this nonsense is just getting very tiresome and everybody wants to move on. Everybody, we have a great year of video games. We literally have so many great games that have been releasing one after the other, no matter what type of game that you're into. There's a lot to play right now. No matter what platform that you're on, with what type of system you play on, there is something for you right now. And there's more coming. You know, the, the, the year is not even done yet. We're only halfway through 2023. We're going into 2024 next year. It's going to be even better because there's a lot more games over the horizon, man. Like, we got to stop getting caught up on nonsense. We got to stop getting caught up or trying to make nonsense when there's no nonsense there. And enjoy this year. Enjoy these releases. Enjoy these games. Have the discourse. Have the debates. Have the discussions when we can. But more than anything else, try to enjoy them. Because I'll tell you right now, when we don't get a year like this, when there's one banger game release after another, we're all going to be, like, really upset and really depressed and be like, man, we took 2023 for granted for what it was. But I digress. Regardless, though, all this stuff is just my opinion. Hopefully, you guys got something out of it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this whole discussion. Let me know some of your thoughts about everything I talked about, Final Fantasy 16, the discourse about that game, the discourse about new game releases online and social media, etc. Put all that stuff in the comment section down below. Of course, as always, make sure you leave a like on this video. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Definitely check out the playlist of all the episodes of JJ's One Man Podcast that are up right now. Also, don't forget, too, on my Patreon, there's exclusive episodes of the podcast that you guys could check out for just a dollar a month. There's a whole bunch of episodes right now that when you join up for a dollar, you get a ton of new content that's exclusive to Patreon. A lot of great stuff on there. Of course, you also get the other benefits of like early access to new videos and a bunch of other cool things there, too, as well. So with that being said... Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Check me out on Twitter at Jake James Lugo. Check me out on TikTok at Jake James TikTok. TikTok is what I meant to say. Check me out on TikTok at Jake James Lugo. Check me out on Instagram. Same thing. All the links that you want to know and that you want to see are in the description box down below. Join my Discord server. It's open to everybody. Come talk games with the community and come hang out with everybody as well. That being said, I will talk to all of you again very soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody. (laughs) 